Let me start with just profet- a prophetic testimony. We love the, the art and the artists and the stuff that goes on. Uh, about a month ago, uh, violence began to go into a, a solo on the violin in a worship time prophetic number. And one of our young ladies who has no feeling in the lower part of her body, uh, nothing from the waist down, all the feeling returned while the violin was playing. <clears throat> The Lord, the Lord is, um, in Zechariah, it talks about the four artisans. The answer, God is sending the four craftsmen, the artistically anointed individuals throughout all the earth to wage war with the demonic realm that is raised up against the body of Christ. It's interesting. We've got to recognize where the anointing is. So one of our gals, two weeks ago, in our healing rooms, one of the artists painted the word hope. And a woman was standing in front of the word hope with fourth stage brain cancer. And she stood in front of the word hope. And as she stood there, she began to weep. People came over to minister to her. She says, no, you don't understand. The tunnel vision just left. All the pressure in the brain lifted, fluid began to drain out of her ear. She went to her doctor. They cannot find any cancer whatsoever. You know, any, I just feel like the Lord wants to give an injection of hope into every single person. And let's just start with it right now. God wants to impart, not at the end of this event. Let's start with hope so we can see breakthrough in realms we've never tasted of before. Hope. Supernatural gift of hope. Hope is the atmosphere that faith grows in. I tell you, I, just, I believe that the Lord is going to release such a gift of hope to every single individual. And... Um, so we're going we're gonna to go for it. You ready? Just go for it. I feel like, uh, here's the deal. Any, just say this with me. Any area of my life that has no hope is under the influence of a lie. That's it. Any area. So we're bringing anything that just carelessly got whacked and we lost hope in, we're bringing it right back to the cross. We're bringing it right back before the King of Glory because I'll tell you what, all the stuff that's going out there that's chaotic, it's the perfect setting for God to increase what He's doing in you, increase what He's doing through you. Put a hand on somebody's shoulder and just start praying, Kingdom come, Kingdom come, supernatural hope, supernatural hope. I just feel like, I don't know, I, you know, I, I've talked to some folks and some have been through the most amazing season of their life and some have been through the most difficult season and everything in between and that's always the case when we gather. But I've got really good news for you. He can take, Bobby Connor would put it this way, he can take 40 years of no and in one day turn it into a yes. 40 years of no and in one day turn it into a yes. According to Corinthians, Jesus is the divine yes. All the promises in him are yes. <laughs> I had Chris share a testimony on Sunday. I want you to hear this again, then we're just going to pray into it. Because I, I tell you, it's just like, why waste a day without hope? I mean, it's just a wasted day. It's just a complete waste of time to have a day where you're not just filled with a sense of promise and purpose. And there's a story here that is one of the most bizarre stories we've experienced in a long time. As soon as he's here, we're going to pray again. So just hold on. Hi, you guys. Good to see you all here. Um, I had uh, this thing happen. I was on Sid Roth in 2004, 
And at the end of sharing my testimony, you know, Sid, how Sid is, he's like, I feel like you're supposed to prophesy to people uh, in the audience, not in the audience, but in the, on the camera. I'm like, all right. So, um, so we prayed for a minute, and I had this picture of this uh, a woman throwing herself out of the, I think it was a third story window of her apartment or her house, she, you know, obviously trying to commit suicide. And I saw her hit the ground and I saw her break her back in three places. And so I, I prophesied that. I said, I see somebody, you threw yourself out of the third story window, tried to kill yourself. You broke your back in three places. And God says he's breaking the spirit of suicide. And he's going to heal you spirit, soul, and body. And so, so that was in 2004. Um, I was just at a conference recently, and this lady comes wheeling up in, in a wheelchair. She's just glowing, and she said, um, you don't know me, but she tells me the story. In 2004, you prophesied this thing on Sid Roth. I said, yeah, I vaguely remember that. And she said, well, in 2007, she said, I threw myself out of a third-story window and broke my back in three places, tried to kill myself. She told me the whole story, what happened and why, and, and she said, and in 2008, I turned my television set on. She goes, I don't watch Christian TV or I don't watch Sid Roth. But when I turned it on, when the TV came on, it came on to you. Just as you started sharing that prophetic word, it was repeat from, four, from 2004. Rerun from 2004. And she said, just as I turned the TV set on, it said, you were saying, I see a woman and you threw yourself, you're, tr- you're going to throw yourself third story window. And she goes through this whole thing. She said, I, that was me. I threw myself out of the third story window. I tried to kill myself. And she said, when I heard that word, she said, I received Jesus and the Lord healed my spirit. He healed my soul. And I'm waiting for him now to heal my body. I want you to pray for me for God to heal my body. And so we prayed for her and she didn't get healed in her body. She just wrote me uh, a few days ago. She said, I'm still waiting for God to heal my body. But isn't that cool that the Lord knew three years before she did it, four years later she hears the prophecy and she receives Christ. I was reading in, uh, in Mark, if I had the Bible here, I'd read it to you, but it just this, uh, somebody had a relative that was dying and they came to Jesus and the servants came running to them and said, don't bother the master. Your, your servant or child, I forget, has died. And it says, and Jesus, when he heard that word, he looked at the person, he said, you know, in so many words, don't pay any attention to that. We've got an opportunity for a miracle. Every time you have had something bad happen, bad news, Jesus has been there to say, all right, now let me give you an update. <laughs> and he is so devoted to every situation being redeemed that he's willing to have somebody prophesy four years ahead of the event, run a rerun to make sure that you see it at the appropriate time so that you can apprehend God's kingdom solution regardless of the situation. God is so devoted to breakthrough in every single area that he would raise someone up to prophesy four years out. I think there's somebody really large in charge. We're going to pray again. This time I want you just to turn to somebody close by. Begin to pray. Every area of hopelessness gets hope. Vision. Everything is touched by vision.